Forgot to get it up. <laughs> we could have got that jump. Well, maybe not you, Vern, but got to get it up in the air. David. Again, not high enough. Get a little air under it. Are they saying they stole the tap? Who would you pick? I guess they said Kentucky stole it. Mark Kestel. Tom Cream. Tubby Smith. And Todd Townsend gets it in the hands of Travis Dean. And Vermont Chris. Kentucky Wildcats go. And they're going to go to Dwayne Wade early and often. Kick it back outside. Diener in the corner. Townsend. And here's Wade guarded by Chuck Hayes, who did a superb job on Kirk Penny in the second half the other night. One basket, a three-pointer early in the second half. Fitch on Diener. Back to Wade. Good hands. There's the first turnover. Hayes gets it in the hand of Daniels. Bogans. Off the glass, and Keith Bogans will go to the line. Didn't have great body control there. Couldn't get his legs under him, but there's that transition D. You turn it over, bad things happen. Uh, much has been said about the connection between Tom Izzo and Tom Crean. Uh, Tom Izzo uh, scripts plays. Tom Crean does the same thing. They're going to go for Dwayne Wade early. The first three or four times, he's going to get some touches. Bogans off the uh, front iron. Thirteen, eighteen, and five limited to seventeen minutes because of the injury and that collision with Kirk Penny the other night and pressure applied by Kentucky and Bogans as Townsend. Townsend's going to have to keep active. He's lumbering. He's not really running efficiently. Now here's Wade. Back it goes to Travis Dina, the sophomore pump fake off the last guy. A little kiss by the little fella. The angelic one that just gets after it. A lot of daggers in that guy. There's Daniels. Enjoyed the pregame report on Travis Diener. Clark Kellogg at halftime. The Division II game is fixed scores. And one of the highlights was the concern of Travis Diener and the family for his cousin, Derek, who's serving in the Middle East. Now here's Wade again, Bill. And uh, unfortunately, the other one, Marquette, not attentive defensively. Look, at, if you can contain the dribble on Wade, you can get some, what a great move here. Great help defense. There's Estill with the rebound, or the rejection, however, and here's Chuck Hayes. Eric Daniels, back to Hayes in the corner, Fitch. He's guarded by Dwayne Wade. They kick it in the corner, and Bogans. Off the glass, didn't get it. Putback is good. Burn twice, baseline drives, inattentive, not stepping up, not containing the bounce. That's very dangerous for Marquette early. Wildcats with an early lead. Now Townsend looks they, like a weave. They do well. Again, uh, he's showing. Uh, not too many people are, they like to slap back the pass for the three off of this weave. There's a screen across by Wade and a screen down for him. Robert Jackson. Entry pass to Jackson. The double comes from Fitch on the first dribble. Now back to Jackson. Long shot taken by Townsend for three. And a lot of cover for Bogans on that last trip. Not as mobile as he would like. Diener's the match because I just feel they, they won't be going to him too often. Tom Crean thinks he can gamble a little bit. Now here's Diener on Bogans. Back to Bogans, lost it. And he can't recover. Travis Diener loses it. Oh, goodness. Well, every young college player, that's one of his dreams, to slide through the baseline. <laughs> again, a walk can be committee. But that's one of those open floor opportunities you got to squeeze in. Again, Bogan's very restricted, Vern. Uh, he's limping a little bit now as he gets the pass. He sure is, Bill. Yeah, it's really sad. He's a gamer, though. This is a great heart. He's totally committed to what they've done this year at Kentucky. And Tubby giving him his due. There's the pass to Estill. 28 points the other night. Misses this one. Knocked out of bounds by Robert Jackson. I tell you, right now, Marquette's not doing a lot of good things defensively. Tom had said on the catch, we're going to go double. At worst, we're going to go on the bounce. Nobody arrived to help Jackson. And not good defense early. Two baseline drives and no help on the box. 5-5 five, five in the early going. Robert Jackson, who played three years at Mississippi State in the SEC, where he started the last two years. I found it curious and uh, a bit humorous that Mark Estill didn't remember him being there. Is that amazing? Because Tuffy did. He had a little nice look here. Daniel should finish. Doesn't block. 
There's Estill again. Still free. Chuck Hayes fouled, and he goes and shoots two. Townsend, boy, an aggressive pursuit of the basketball by the Wildcats. Uh, Marquette early, and not themselves, not exhibiting the same personality. Bodies getting pushed under the rim. Daniels with the long reach at first, and here's the challenge on Estill. They've got to do a better job, Marquette, because Kentucky really taking it to him on both ends of the floor early here. Tom Crean is going to get Steve Novak in the game. Todd Townsend picks up his second foul, and here's the freshman who was the hero of the overtime win over Missouri when he hit three consecutive threes. He is a real talent on the perimeter at 6'10". I hope Quinn went to Roast Beef Central when you were talking so many nice things. Quinn <laughs> Snyder, that is the Missouri coach. Novak nailing them in overtime against him. Now Diener, guarded by Fitch. Here's Dwayne Wade, guarded by Chuck Hayes. And Wade up in the air, taken by Hayes, quick out in the pass. Bogans tries to hustle, gets it up and in. He needed the deuce. I think he had a guy in front of him. They are not getting back. Some real serious breakdowns by Marquette. Diener with the dish. Jackson with the foul. He goes to the line. And Daniels tried to help out. They got to push the ball. They've got to get organized, Marquette. Right? You can see Kentucky now efficient, confident, really taking advantage of open floor opportunities and breakdowns in the half court. Now Robert Jackson will go to the line. He is from Milwaukee, was not recruited by Marquette, nor Wisconsin, wound up at Mississippi State, played three years, started two. W. Smith said, well, Estill may not remember him, I do, and he would say, he talked about the chant that the fans in Starkville would uh, deliver whenever he scored. And he would just have he made that, I was going to do it, but Robert Jackson. Jackson. I mean, and Tubby, of course, I said, how did you have time to listen to that? Well, of course, they win on the road, Kentucky. You can tune in. And here's the substitution. Keith Bogans will get a rest, and Cliff Hawkins comes in. They go much smaller with this lineup, but quicker. And Jackson. I welcome you to send. Uh, no, no. Okay, Once good. is enough. You know, it's interesting with Bogans sitting down. I would keep him active. Keep him moving. Keep it loose. The difficulty occurs sometimes when you tighten. Kentucky by one during the 16-minute mark. Stolen by Jackson. Away from Estill. Wade's been silenced. Now it's Fitch. And they put Hayes on uh, Steve Novak out on the perimeter. It's amazing, the scatter reports. Well, you just don't want to give Novak an open look. I remember what Ben Howland told us. Here's Wade off the glass, too strong. Jackson, good rebound. And that's what he has to attack that tin. They got to match the ferocious play of Kentucky. Marquette by one, 8-7. And that one is rejected by Scott Merritt to Marquette. 8-7, Golden Warriors. And he said Tom Crean gathered the caps of the last seven world champions in major sports and talked about what it took for each team to win the world championship. Anaheim, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the Maryland Terrapins. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now we know why they didn't win. <laughs> He's got them prepared. Everything will help the morale. Of course, early on, they weren't as attentive to detail. Here's the double. This is exactly what they were going to do. This time on Kamara. Peace. Blocked. Wade got it. The dish on the rebound, however. And Gerald Fitch gets it off the glass. And a run out to Wade. Hayes is there to knock it out of bounds. Touched last, however, by Marquette. Nice run at that particular chip. Here's the challenge. Uh, Peace. And the ability to turn it into something constructive. I mean, Wade, very active that time. He's got to get on the board a little bit now, get his head into the game. And Tom Green was telling both of us yesterday was the best he has seen him in practice all year. That's how well he performed. High level. Now, here's Estill guarded by Jackson. And Bogan's in with the screen. You can see him hobbling almost. Here's the pop out. Normally, he'd shoot that shot. Right. A great post feeder as well. Something with him on the floor to look for. Here's the double, something they want to do. See if they come again. Back to Estill. The double comes from steps. Wade. Steps. You know, that's great, though. The reset by Kentucky was clever. The first time you dump it in and a double comes, it's strong. Once you kick it out the second time, they're a little more reluctant. They're not in a hurry to go down. Heads up play, unfortunately, the walk. 9-8 Kentucky has the lead. 13th meeting overall between these two. We mentioned they met in 1994 in the NCAAs. And what a nice pass from Merritt to Jackson, but there's Esther. Nothing easy. Marquise, Fitch, Diener slaps it. 
Now, Jules Kamara tracks it down. Now they're playing bigger now. See if they take advantage of any high low sets. It's a terrific passing tandem. The two big guys. Here's Estel, comes left side. Bogans for three, not there. Good position for the rebound by Dwayne Wade. And this is where they're dangerous in the early to get an open look. Generally, Novak or Diener. Jackson, 18 footer. Merritt. No call. Good not call, too, for an inside rebound. And how about that one? Six foot four, serious hops. DW. His teammates call him D Wade. He's a junior. A partial qualifier, but posted a three point grade point average in the spring semester last year. Great story, great dedication, too, both on and off the court. There's the pass to Kamara, looks inside for Estel. Merritt gets back. Bogans tries to go off the dribble. Foul. And Novak not quick enough uh, to handle. He's got to move the feet, don't reach in. Even with Bogans' foot difficulty, but the inside position, I think it's very important to establish itself on the glass. You notice Kentucky really helps, gathers to the point of attack. They block shots in there or changes, so you can offensive rebound if you get to the spot. Marquise Estel heads to the bench. Chapman and Sanders come on. Terry Sanders, Joe Chapman. And they, go, okay. they go a little box and one here now, Vern. Novak uh, head up on Fitch. Everybody looking around, searching for a body to match up. There it is in the back with Murray. Here's Chuck Hayes backing in. Pump off the glass, not good. Offensive board, Chuck Hayes. I'll tell you, he is incredible. Bogans for three, no. Kamara tips it out. They're owning the board. Uh, maybe that one's over the top, but you are right. Tough, and look at this lefty. The Southpaw Hawkins able to knock it down. Everybody banging the clip. He's with a, just a marvelous trip on the offensive class. Joe Chapman, number 32, sets the screen for Travis Diener. Foul called. Cliff Hawkins. Hawkins, a good guy. You mentioned speed and quickness when he's in the game, but here's that little lefty hook, the little guy. He cuts well. He had mentioned they become a better passing team. They work very hard at it. And above all, he said no distractions this year. They're together on and off the floor, and that's the difference of this wonderful run that Tubby Smith's guys have had. Wow. Offensive rebounds, 8-3. Here's Diener for three. Not there. He had games of 29 and 26 in the first two games of the NCAA tournament. You know, a, a different role in the win the other night against Pittsburgh. Uh, he loves to pass the ball. He will take what you give him, but you got to challenge his shot. Nobody put a hand up. Hawkins. Oh, what a nifty pass. And a foul is called. Uh, Daniel's another one of those guys. He was the recipient of that clever feed, and then he again made the extra pass. That's the difference in this Wildcat team. They give it to somebody in a better spot. You know, maybe reminiscent of the Carolina Dean Smith days. You know, to pass up a 10-footer to get a 5-footer to get a 2-footer. Solid play. Four team fouls on Marquette. A one-point Kentucky lead. Neither team hitting a good average. And Vern, this is that flat 3-2. Nice cut by Daniels. Too easy. But they are picking it apart to reading the defense, and it's a a high level of sophistication when your guys are mature enough to see the subtle change of a defensive end. You can just see denying out here at the Hawkins, all of a sudden it opens up. Now he will dump that off to the proper guy or finish himself. Improved basketball player. Second personal foul on Scott Merritt. Robert Jackson getting ready to come back in. Bradley's going to come in at the point and a three point play for Eric Daniels. So Dwayne Wade, quick rest. Karen Bradley comes in number 10 and Travis Diener will get a spot uh, and a cup of water a little blow here for him and uh, Bradley played well the other night too made a couple of shots confident performer Bradley a 5'11 freshman out of Katy Texas down in the Houston area and here's Dwayne Wade keeps the dribble alive which makes him dangerous and look at right up on Bogans showing good foot speed that time slip what a play. Kamara's got it. Has to let it go. Taken by Hawkins. Daniels kick it right side. No steps. Charge. Charge. Boy, Hawkins, what a great defensive play. Vern set that break up. But the counter by Tom Crean's guys. Solid step in. But the rotation by Hawkins, marvelous. Under 12, it's a good one. Now you can see the numbers there. Showing a lot of courage. Uh, 
Unbelievable. The pain that he must be going through. A little full court pressure now by Kentucky. They want to keep the pressure on. Here's Dwayne Wade, one of four in the early going. Bradley in at the point, back to Wade. And Chuck Hayes still on him. Sanders and Novak and Antoine Barber is off the bench for Kentucky, wearing number 33. What a cross. Bradley with the jumper. Tipped, chased down by Dwayne Wade. Jumper for three. I get him off. I mean, that's the key thing. Once he gets in the ball game with the head, he's a different player. And that may, he had an open layup earlier. They blocked it on him. You've got to stay at home. That time, he's we need to help out. Now, we certainly saw that here Thursday night. Dwayne Wade held to one basket in the first half, and he erupted in the second half for 20 of his 22 points. And Jackson's got to be careful. He just grabbed Kamara's shirt. Now, here's Hayes. Unless he wants to go into business, he better let go. <laughs> Barber, and it's tracked down by Terry Sanders, number 40. Dwayne Wade, once again. Very good with the dribble. That's what sets him apart. Look at that hesitation to blow by in the day. I thought he was out of bounds, Jackson. Shot is short, gets the roll, it drops through. And that's all Wade. Just instigated that particular play. Not a set play, just a blow by. Marquette back on top. Five unanswered now out of the uh, timeout. Here's Chuck Hayes. Ooh, they got the foul. That time Sanders, but uh, Wade. Talked about getting on track only the one basket the first half the other night. He runs this down. You can see anybody in the area has to come out and help. Generally, they like Hayes, but here, all the white shirts drawn for the penetration, a little dish, and writing yourself so important by Jackson, and then the ability to tip it in traffic. Now for the day for Dwayne Wade, five points, three rebounds. I mentioned the fact that he was a partial qualifier who uh, Posted that three-point, also married, father of a son, Zaire, who was born 13 months ago. His wife, Siobhan, a student at Marquette. They've been together since they were 15. Huh? And he is a guy that this team looks to, just like Bogans. I mean, they feed off of his ability. Here's the matchup, a lot of expression with the arms and hands, chasing people. Look, too many people on one guy there. Very confusing, gives him an open look. Pitch for three over Bradley, no. Jackson. Here comes Wade. He's got Bradley way on the right side. He'll kick it out to Bradley. Spots up to the three. Okay, great play again by Wade. Everybody drawn to him. And Bradley, who's very confident, and in Katy, Texas, down your neck of the woods, drills it. Hasn't had that many threes this year. That's only his ninth successful attempt. Four point Mark Kentley. Oh, my goodness. Come on. Let's just keep playing. Wow. Nice penetration there by Fitch. That's one of those maybe play on a little bit of a flop, but the ability to get down the floor and spread. This is what makes Marquette very tough to guard. Look at all the white shirts, Fern. Everybody gets in the middle and then tries to peel off. Against Marquette, you can't all go to the, you got to peel off. Don't go to the rim. Steve Novak getting congratula congratulations on the bench. Tom Crean. We'll pace two miles before this game is over. High energy. The kids are really understanding and get a kick out of it. He's always ready to go. 9-10 to go first half. Wade again with Hayes. Bradley didn't know the play. <laughs> Zipper play, the screen for him, and unfortunately, all the confusion ends with a turnover on the sideline. Todd Townsend was out of bounds. Now Bogan's back in. And Antoine Barber will sit. You know, before the game, I went and saw both coaches. Mm -hmm. And I went into Tubby's room, and I asked one of the assistants, where is he? He's in the back. He's talking to one of the guys who works the building, not talking about anything pertaining to basketball. It was just incredible. And I saw David Hobbs, his longtime assistant, who was the head coach at Alabama. I said, he's unbelievable. He said, was he up there talking off to one of the guys who works here? <laughs> <laughs> he was. Oh, dear. Near steal, Daniels gets it back. There's the empty pass from Bogans. Look at them sniffing down there. They like to rake the ball on the post. Bogans with a jumper after he gets it back. And he got hit after. They really showing how much he's enjoyed his career there. Giving everything he can. Not able to convert the shot, but he does take a little bit of a whack at the end of this particular play. Trying to help out and follow through. Nails him. Sanders with the foul. Keith Bogans, the inspiration for this 26-game winning streak for Kentucky. Tubby Smith telling us yesterday 
He's never missed a game in his career. Mm. And of course, he was a, a starter as a freshman, thought about going to the NBA. Uh, when he went to the camps, learned he was not going to be a choice. Came back last year, really had an unsuccessful junior season. But my, what he has meant to this Kentucky team in this his final year. His mind wasn't cluttered this year. He wasn't thinking about anything but play and helping his team. Jackson, jump stop. Whoa! Wow, is that powerful? Oh! Robert! Able to get inside. Jackson with a terrific use of a legal step move. Five-point Marquette lead. And here's a, a nickel dimer on Jackson. A little curl in the box. They're trying to clean that up. But I mean, this is just marvelous. If he moves either foot, once he makes that move, Vern, watch this jump. Bang. Now that's okay. If he moved either foot forward, it would have been illegal. But this is some of the things that Marquette's big guys have become particularly effective in that area. Scott Murray comes to mind as well as Jackson. And Marquise Estel is at the line. Hit only four of ten in the first round. He's under 60% for the year. Get the fastest tournament scoreboards on the internet with updated play-by-play -play of each Elite Eight game only at CBSSportsLine.com or America Online at a keyword CBS Sportsline. I think the big decision for Tubby comes at halftime. Is Bogans effective enough? Uh, are they in control of the game? Can they steal some minutes without him? And we'll see how that progresses, too. Side pick and roll and a lock low. Woo! Wait! That's going! Almost Jordan-like in his early days, but the jump shot's going. Call for mom. Bogans with the answer. Good for you. Love it. Now this is all on blood and guts. Intestinal fortitude. Wade. Look at his own right now, Vernon. Picked his own. And an air ball. Wade chases it down. Daniels. Here's Jackson again. Oh, my. He's having a marvelous first half. What a soft little smooch by the big guy. Caressing the tip. Well, he's a big guy. 6'10 and 265. Who said you could never go home, huh? <laughs> Back to Milwaukee. Here's Estel and Jackson. And a foul called on Sanders. Third foul on Sanders. Well, so Marquise Estel will go back to the line. Steve Novak is going to re-enter the game for Marquette. Here's Novak for Sanders. And Vern, did you, did, speaking to Marquise Estel, did you see his eyes light up when we asked about Wisconsin playing him with one guy? He said, I've had doubles all year long. Just love the opportunity to dominate on his own. He well, won't he get that tonight. 28 points in that victory over Wisconsin the other night when they did single team in Kentucky. Four of ten and at the free throw line. Here's Travis Diener. No back. Daniels, good defense. On the catch, get right under him. And the double on Jackson. Townsend, they find no back. Takes three. Peace, I believe. Yes, I think so. Jackson. But that's Chuck Hayes right there. In the corner, this for three. Estel, up, rejected by Wade. How about that? Getting involved. At the other end. Oh my goodness, score the goal. Is that magnificent? Oh, just keep on playing. Let me enjoy this, Vern. I mean, his changes of speeds and body control as he blows by guys. And then the understanding of traffic and responsibility. You put it up, they're gonna block it. It's a fast break the other way, but dipsy do. My goodness. When you have that confidence and that flow going, they're gonna have to double him. And we talked the other night, you can't let him beat you. I think they're gonna have to pinch and recover. Uh, now, from Kentucky, a little comeback now. Usually inside after the timeout. They also step up the pressure once they come out of a timeout. There's Kamara back on the floor now. Bogans, no back out on him. Bogans tries to go by him off the glass. The tip, out there, over the top, over the top. Eric Daniels. Daniels, you notice Bogans pushed off to. He just uh, can't turn the corner, so you rely on maybe the playground ability you once had, where they're not going to call the foul. But he just doesn't have that blow by as he gets into this area. Now watch the left arm because he knows he can't get past his defender. And then Daniels trying to give them a lift with a tip. 
Diener goes for Wade. Loses control. And it's out of bounds. Chuck Hayes comes back. He'll replace Eric Daniels for Tubby Smith. Yeah, quite frankly, I think they've gotten more out of Bogans than uh, both of us would have anticipated. Well, and, and uh, the subjective element of his presence on the floor is so important. Well, you, you, th you talk philosophically, uh, leadership qualities, uh, what the guy brings in morale, and that, that's what he contributes. Now, the addition of playing well, and being on the floor sometimes through lift spirits, nice screen gives the open look to Hawkins. Kentucky not shooting well at all. Running right. and Marquette just the oh wow oh, oh. we have seen the whole <laughs> array oh he knows how to make sure he gets to the free throw line as well you know bill we talk so much about mcdonald's all americans right Dwayne wade was not you know where he finished in the mr basketball bowl his senior year seventh in the state um, he went to mcdonald's he was not a mcdonald's right <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible but you know guys understand players and some slip through they fit in your program they fit your profile he's certainly one of them near the conclusion of every ncaa tournament game will select the chevy most valuable player of the game from each team to date chevrolet has contributed more than eight million dollars to the general scholarship funds of america's colleges and universities 28-19, uncharted territory for Kentucky. And they do the right thing. They go to Estel and, and lay with the help there, Diener. Got to make that one. Nice job, and I think it's Estel over the back. And right now, Marquette more attuned to their basic fundamentals defensively. That time getting the guy's body. Uh, be ch uh, check your guy out and keep the ball in front of you. His third. Just heard the public address announcer say his third, and I thought, I don't remember the first two. It's, it's not a mistake. A slippage. You know, I happened to be in Milwaukee when uh, Robert Jackson was a possibility of a transfer. And Tom was saying, well, you know, why would he like us? And I think the, the one decision was he was coming back to home where he went to high school and would fit in with the players. And it's probably one of those decisions you don't think much of, but oh my goodness, just for one year, you can see the body, the felt look, uh, just a little quicker than he used to be, mobile, and the confidence with the 10 or 12 footer as well as terrific hands around the rim. The lead remains at 10. One field goal in the last 7.25. This is a team that has won 26 in a row. They're the number one team in the last AP vote of the regular season. They have not lost in 2003. Bogans tries to save it. Camp gets nice. back on defense. How about the hustle of Cliff Hawkins? Uh, unbelievable. Cliff really after it saved the basket with that particular play. But you can see now Kentucky uh, not efficient on the offensive end. They're really not so much the pass fern, not getting into the right spot. Estelle not being able to dominate. They were trying to look from the top of the key down. Marquette has taken that away. That has been very effective for them in the latter part of this season. Todd Townsend will throw it in for Marquette. Bogans guards the inbound pass. No back. Here's Diener, who's been quiet in this first half. And there's that zone on the end of bounds. You can't leave him alone. He'll drill it. So much for the quiet. Welcome the noise. Oh, goodness. The 2 3 got the gap and nailed it. This is a 22 to 5 run. And they got a charge because Diener offered it up, went over and helped out. What a phenomenal read. Well, so much for the altar boy concept. They said he's got the angelic look. Not too many angels are going to stand in the way. Harm's way, like Diener, right in that area. Just unbelievable. They just don't recover. He's able to convert from deep. And I'll, I'll tell you what, a little joy in Milwaukee and in this building right now. They got a lot of people on their side. And the problems become magnified for the Cats as Chuck Hayes picks up his third foul. You see the concerned look of Tubby. They've got to get it on this end. Step it up. Catch and release. No. One of the rare misses for Novak, but it's chased down. How about the difference in rebounding here in the last six, seven minutes? Out of bounds. Wade. They're giving him a foul? No. 
Oh, timeout. He Great called save. time. Great save. Oh. Oh, good. What else can he do right, Fern? Oh. And I think it's time to give Leslie credit for this one. She said last night that this game should be billed as Marquise versus Marquette in a Marquis matchup. I'm not so sure she wants to take credit for that. <laughs> I don't think so either. <laughs> oh, goodness. Hawkins, runner, no. Look at them rebound, Vern. They've out rebound the last 17 minutes, 15 to 2, Kentucky. Marquette, they've stepped it up from early on in the game. Wade on the floor, jumper with the screen. Off the mark, Kamara with the rebound. And Bogan's limping badly as he comes up across the timeline. And this is what's tough. He runs rim to rim, Estel, and locks his guy, and Hawkins right on the money. Off the timeout, great selection by Tubby Smith. And you are right, he is laboring and just doing whatever he can to muster. Put the pain aside. You can see him with the feet moving him. This is a, I've never had a high one. I've had a couple of bad ones. And but from what I'm told, there's an extraordinary amount of pain. 26% in the ball game. Estel back at the line. And here comes Robert Jackson. Marquise Estel, who has really blossomed this year for Kentucky, lost 60 pounds over the course of his collegiate career. He was bothered by bad knees. He's got great hands, doesn't he, Bill? He sure does. Sure does. And Merritt going out with three. 357 to go, first half. Now, to give you a little context, they lost to Louisville in December by 18 points. They actually led in that game at the half by three, and they being Kentucky, they trailed Vanderbilt by 14 in the first half, down by eight at the break, and came back and won that. But Steve Novak wasn't hitting shots like that in that game. They, full, they had a full court press for him. You, it's dangerous. You're going to open up shooters. Bogan's not mobile enough to pressure the full court. It really hurt them. They're pressing Dino, who's got eight assists the other night and zero turnovers. He doesn't cough it up. Now, this equals the largest deficit Kentucky has faced in this year of 2003. Diener got it. Hustle play. Watch Novak on the wing. There's the dish and the release. The early defense. Transition-wise, suspect by the Wildcats. Everybody going to the chin. They spread you, and they can harm you. In the NCAA, they are hitting 61% from three-point range. That's in the first three games. They're 6 of 10 to equal that percentage this afternoon. And a lot of open looks. Nice screen to get Kamara to the box. But look at all the traffic. Bogans takes it. Adjusts free throws. And he's really showing something on Bogans. He's getting after his guys right there. Uh, but the ability to make shots. I mean, you understand Novak can drill it, so you must get out on him. But also in the early offense, Diener gets it centered. Everybody's drawn to the basketball. A little kick at the puppy set. And Novak, a little nylon. Steve Novak from Brown Deer, Wisconsin. Bogans. Alexandria, Virginia. The Matha, four years at Kentucky. And Morgan Wooten, how about playing for some great people? It's his old Kentucky home now, though. He said that's where he wants to go. Enjoy life. And right now, it's very important as Tubby hangs tough. That's the one wonderful thing if you've been down the road before. I think he's just trying to get out of this half in contact. If you could get it to 10, Burr, I mean, that, that's like a number we all throw out there. But get some juices flowing a little bit. And they're trying to, uh, but they're not getting much out of their defense. Wade with the dish to Jackson. And he avoids the charge more importantly as Kamara does the flop. How about that sequence? Diener to Wade to Jackson. Bingo. Unbelievable. Just as efficient with the basketball as you can be. Dwayne Wade, in addition to everything else, has four assists. And Jackson rebound. I think he ran Hawkins out. He didn't see him. He was so small out there. Well, it's not a law firm, but it'll work, Fern. Uh, just a solid basketball. Avoid the charge on the flop. And Jackson, the bigs run the floor for Marquette. You've got to match them, or they'll punish you, as they did that trip. Tom Crean, 37 last Tuesday out of Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Wife Joni, the daughter of Jack Harbaugh, the well-known football coach, recently retired at Western Kentucky. 
And uh, her two brothers, John, we mentioned earlier, and Jim Harbaugh from Michigan, and various NFL teams. And incidentally, Jim and Dad are out in Oakland. Right. Uh, he, Tom said, well, they'll, if we make it, they'll show up. <laughs> you know, they're the big timers. Just teasing, of course, Dina gets a look. Ooh. Rebound, Wade. Again. Taken away by Azapuke, who's on the floor. Kalena Azapuke, number 24, Barber Hawkins. Hawkins goes by Wade, gets it Fitch off the mark. Pulled and another Marquette rebound. Pull the string just a little bit on the open look. Harassing Marquette defense. More custom to seeing him challenge shots. where they got to get it done though dig down this is the dirty work scratch yourself back out of it stick to your fundamentals and make sure you screen off on a miss that was not for him that was for Novak and rightfully so how about his stroke he's amazing it's a just incredible make a video quick jack that's not going to help you got to run your stuff they are frazzled right now by an outstanding Marquette push. Diener, Novak spots up. They kick it the other way. Why not? That's Dwayne Wade. Look, you got the two guys that can drill it deep in Diener and Novak. Wade, who beats you, turns the defense and kicks it back out. It can be tough to handle. Travis Diener gets a screen. A little pick and roll. And then how about that lead? And he actually led it and to lead him to the basket. It wasn't directly to Jackson. It was a field pass. Extraordinary. Tubby called the timeout. Wow. Unaccustomed as they are to being behind or not controlling this Marquette team doing everything. A little leaf. Come on, Robert, pick it up. Jackson with the kiss for And out of the gate, uh, Marquette, fundamentally, it was not as strong as we're accustomed to seeing them. And it was only 8-7. Kentucky didn't take advantage, but now, little zone look. Runner in the lane, got it. Pretty good pocket. Nice little call and adjustment, too. Right side, Townsend. Here's Wade. Kicks it. Diener. That's three. That's a long rebound for Esther. And Vern, that's what they do, drive it to the basket. You turn your head. They got their no. two guys knocking the shot. And of course, after the time expired. Basket did go in, but did not count. We began the afternoon talking about Bill Withers and lean on me, and Dwayne Wade has certainly done that. And they've followed his lead as well. Off the glass, good start, Kentucky. Hawkins gets it. Just a small amount of pressure. Keith Bogans is on the floor to start the second half. 45-28, Marquette. In 1998, Kentucky trailed Duke by 18 in the first half, came back, won the game. Diener gets the basket, I believe. Are they going to wipe it out? Oh, they have to. Yeah, they have to. Yeah. I mean, even at Marquette, they wouldn't score that goal. I mean, much less here in a regional final, but clever. Get him up, get him airborne, and get the contact. Gerald Fitch picks up his second foul. 45-28. Talked about that 1998 encounter when uh, Kentucky came from behind, defeated Duke, went on to win the championship in Tubby Smith's first year. And they got a mismatch here. They're trying to establish Murray. Into the corner, Wade, there's the switch. Nice read. Taken away, Eric Daniels. Diener gets back. I think Diener with that reach in, Vern, in the, the open floor area. Nice anticipation by the boy. They had a nice job defensively, and Wade is coming up gimpy in the backcourt. And this is the banging of the knees, I think, as they, he went baseline. You see Bogans, his contribution doesn't get the charge call, but that's, if anything, painful. In the least, he'll be able to walk it off. Tom Green giving the concern look as to whether to take him out. Look at this line statistically. 11 points, 8 rebounds, 7 assists, and 4 blocks, and Bogans. How about that? I mean, all guts. We mentioned it earlier. He's the guy they look to to lead. Here's Dwayne Wade trying to forget about the knee injury. So much for that, huh? Diener. 
Daniels tipped back by Estill. Here comes Kentucky. Exactly the kind of start they had to have. Bad shot. Got to be poised. Look for somebody else. You got a bigger opponent. Read it and deliver. Got the angle. Oh. And it's Steiner giving it up early. One of the best I remember giving it up early was Bobby Hurley in college. Dieter's got that facility too to see it, get the guy in the right angle where he can blow by and get to the rim. There's Hawkins with the pass to Daniels, got that. Good switch of the hand to the right too. The lefty. Now Fitz will guard the inbound pass. Dieter finds Townsend. And here comes Marquette. 47 33, largest lead was 19. Picked up defensively by Gerald Fitch. Nice steal by Bogans again, doing a solid job defensively. But we talked about giving it up early and the angle, Vern. You can just see here, you're by your defender. He can't contain, and the assistance defensively, and not quite what it should be. And a wonderful feed, switch to the right hand with the defense on the left. Good protection, Eric Daniels. Dwayne Wade will inbound for Marquette. Finds Robert Jackson, gets it back, and now Travis Diener, the point guard. The difficulty guarding Wade uh, with Hawkins is size. He can elevate over him, he can rebound over him, he can post up over him, he can manufacture a post. Hawkins guards Wade. Recall that Chuck Hayes had him in the first half, but Hayes picked up his third foul. Diener. Yeah, I think he should have I, let it go. I thought so, too, but he, uh, you know, if you're the big guy, uh, you want to thank him, though. You got to serve those who serve you. Banging bodies all game. Keith Bogans picks up the foul. And Robert Jackson goes to the free throw line. Well, let's check in with Leslie Bissell. Vern, you and Billy have been talking about the Kentucky comebacks. Well, at halftime, Tubby Smith said he appealed to their pride just as he did back in 98 when they trailed Utah in the national championship by 10 points. We'll see if cats have 10 lives, Vern. <laughs> yes. Oh, they must be hopeful. Jackson double-double, 16 points, 11 rebounds. And Tubby with the jacket off. He's business. He's hoping his team means business as well. Here's the matchup now. A little screen to get into the lane. Daniels, nice rebound by Estel. Fitch has some room. Oh, look at the defense by Wade, nice. but he does pick up the foul. You're right, Vern, nice cover, nice reaction. In this defense, if you can get between the gaps, they're communicating by pointing. You just got to get two people to play one, and that time Wade came a long way to try and get a piece of it. Gerald Fitch, Macon, Georgia, had a troubled season last year. Minister from his hometown wrote Tubby Smith a letter when he recruited Gerald Fitch, and he was not that highly recruited, and said, listen, Mr. Smith, give this young man a chance. He's had a very difficult childhood. No father, brother, gunned down in 1998. And Tubby Smith last year, when he shed a number of troublesome players, decided to stay with Gerald Fitch. It's paid huge dividends. And he just said to us yesterday how enjoyable it's been without any nonsense going on, uh, both coach and player, Fitch as well. And the dividends that have been paid are more significant off the court than on. That's part of the growth process. And of course, no bigger stage than Kentucky. And here's the defense, something they got to get turnovers from and scores from. A little more aggressive on the defensive end. Chuck Hayes comes back. He plays with three fouls. Eric Daniels will throw it in for the Wildcats of Kentucky. Now, Tubby uh, refers to the bus frequently because his dad drove the school bus when they were youngsters. They buying in, getting in. Some don't belong in the bus, some do. Some don't belong in this seat, others do. And right now, it's been occupied beautifully by Kentucky all year long until uh, this difficult run here. Well, they trail by 15. Hawkins, spin move, jumper, no. Good non call, oh. too, and it kept it alive by Daniels. Jackson just brought it down a little bit. Keep it up, big fella. Good anticipation by Daniels. And Keith Bogan's getting ready to come back on the floor for the Wildcats of Kentucky, who trail by 13. Usually they'll go inside in this situation. Oh, my. <laughs> Is that getting the bounce? Oh, you got to have long arms to get under the rim and ward off a defender. 
Jackson is seven of ten. Here's pitch. Dishes in the corner. Hawkins. There's the cutter. Loose ball. Marquette. Diener. Nice close by Marquette. Here comes Travis Diener. They can match up smaller here with the two small Kentucky guys. Hawkins and Fitch. Spin move. Way too much, huh? Went to the well a little bit. Too many big bodies. Good Hawkins. Nestle's got his guy. His guy is Robert Jackson. There's the dish to Daniels. Nicely done. I love the cut by the catch there. Now Daniels really providing a lift here with just little things. The dump down and then the sprint to the tin. 13. 15, 18 to go. And they have not used Murray. There's the double on him. He's got to find somebody or they got to cut to the rim for him. I believe they got and Daniels, huh? They did. Eric Daniels. Marquette leads, but the lead has been cut by six. There's a guy with more than a passing interest in Kentucky's fortunes, one of the great players in the history of Wildcat basketball. In this, their 100th year, Kenny Skywalker. He could elevate, also in the audience, by the way, Chapman, he said he couldn't get the ringside <laughs> seat <laughs> with the fans. Rex Chapman, another of the greats who is here. 100 years, hoping for a comeback here. A Marquette team trying to get back to the final four for the first time since they won the national championship in 1977. Here's Wade. And Dwayne Wade's going to go to the free throw line. They do a wonderful job of clearing in the lane for Wade, too. Now, Tubby's really searched for different lineups, different looks. Now Kamara's the center. Reasonable size at the forward spots and the two little guys. And so it's become a perimeter game unless they get to Kamara. That is the fourth foul on Chuck Hayes. Go to NCAAsports.com for complete NCAA basketball championship coverage. Get daily tournament photos, video highlights, and latest news from each region at the official website for NCAA Sports. Chuck Hayes, four fouls. And when you play Wade, and that's the problem. He reach, he jukes you, uh, takes advantage of you, gets you off balance, and a terrific defender, Hayes, with four. 52-38. Kentucky, winners of 26 in a row. Bradley's on the floor. There's Kamara. Ooh, hello. <laughs> Tipped out by Barber. Bogans. They've earned a high pick and roll. They'll blitz it. Watch them jump out now. They go the other way. They disdain. Bogans, short. that's short. Kamara tries to save it on the uh, ground and picked up by Robert Jackson. Solid game for Jackson. Well, he has been on top of it. Played as physical as he has had to and been in great position. 13 rebounds for Robert Jackson. Side pick and roll, and they space. Aaron Bradley, Wade, up, under. Oh! Oh, that's that extraordinary. Great body control. The little spooch at the end. That's the size difference, though. He can get up, take advantage of people. Kicked out. Pitch. Nice. And a free throw. Wade swiped and got a piece. Tell you what, Vern, they, they do a nice job. They shuffle cut, and then they side pick and roll. He pops to the corner. Now, he looks like he's in trouble. Barber, about the same size, maybe an inch taller. Little kiss. Oh, is he devastating. Feeling so good about his individual play. When recruited by Tom Crean in Crean's first year, Dwayne Wade said he was worried about hitting the qualifying mark in the ACT. And he asked Tom Crean, will you stay with me even if I'm not qualified the first year? Tom Crean said, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's worked out well for everybody at Marquette. Bogans arrest, Gerald Fitch at the line. Can he get something out of the defense? I think that they get the full court pressure. Quicker lineup on the perimeter right now. Back to Travis Dean. 6'1 sophomore from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. He played high school basketball with his cousins, two of whom were playing collegiate division one. Wow. Oh, wow. Well, Dieter just drags the defense and kicks it to Novak. Both of these guys have shoveled snow to shoot in the backyard. And not for money, huh? Novak, the freshman at 6'10, four of six from three-point range out of Brown Deer, Wisconsin. 
highly recruited by both Wisconsin and Marquette. That one knocked off the glass. The putback, no good. Tipped. Oh, what a dance. What a job. He may have been out of bounds, but what a play by Daniels. Gorgeous feed. And the pressure. Foul called on Azubuke. Well, they say to use all the floor and occasionally use a little extra. What do you think? Well, judgment. It I didn't think, prevail. Yes. <laughs> a little toe dance on the baseline, but I just enjoy watching tape. Daniels sees people and really comes up with different deliveries. Great feel for the game. Now, Travis Diener will uh, throw it in. 16 point margin, 57 43. Largest margin of the game was 19. Here's Novak. And once it gets back in his hand, it's settled. It will all be one in half court by Kentucky. They're going to guard. Same play here. Guard drag on the. They don't play, and he gets an open look. Misfire. Look at him hustling. Oh, the dish. Jackson rejected the putback. Got it. How about Jack terrific play by Jackson? Just hanging around. Very competitive trip. 20 points and 13 rebounds for Robert Jackson. Kamara. They go the other way with Kamara. Well, if you're going to compete against Kentucky, it's got to be done on the glass. This may have been a signature trip, but Dieter Steele, the sleight of hand, but you don't pack the tack. Everybody stays active. Jackson finishes it up, but a solid play by Dieter. It gets the enthusiasm back involved in the game. Here's the line on Robert Jackson, 20 and 13. Whew. And a 16-point lead for the Golden Eagles of Marquette. Hot pick and roll, Novak gets him back. Daniel starts him. Scotty for Vega put it on the floor. He's not a blow-by guy. Aaron Bradley. Here's one who is. And they're going to run the same play. High five, screen, and they stay. Nice, unfortunately, cross it in front. And the loose ball tossed up by Jackson up there. Antoine Barber, number 33. Elizabethtown, Kentucky, and a foul on Todd Townsend, number one. Didn't move the feet. 11.38 to go. 59-43. Uh, Leslie mentioned the spirit, get after it. Uh, Tubby said we you know, got a lot of pride. Uh, they have exhibited it right now. They're five for nine. Uh, you know, this half, I mean, this is a team that has done beautifully. He's trying to search and find some bodies. Bogan's out right now. More of a speed lineup. And Dwayne Wade gets a chance to rest for Marquette. Here's Daniels. There's the cut off the glass. Beautiful shot by Gerald Fitch. Well, it sure was for a tough angle. So let's set the five on the floor for each team for Marquette. It's Diener, Bradley, Scott Merritt, Novak, and Todd Townsend. And for Kentucky, Eric Daniels, Phil Hawkins, Antoine Barber, Mark Reese, Estill, and Gerald Fitch. There's the high pick and roll again. Travis Diener, number 34. And the automatic switch it. And I know that not a guy that goes to the post. Someone with the bill. And here goes Antoine Barber. Oh. Oh, oh. That, they're going to get it off half court, Burns. I, I think they're wasting a lot of energy extending the floor. Get back and be solid. I mean, even here, backpedaling, it's a soft kind of man to man fall. So that's what you want. And the margin is 12 with 10.40 to go. Different team without Wade in there. Nice strip again, this time by Hawkins. Merritt gets back and retrieves it for Marquette. Where Townsend was wide open. Yes. With that Wade on the floor, we set a different team, but Bogans too. And that's why these Kentucky kids have to reach back as they get late in the shot clock. And it now sits at five. Diener throws one up off the glass. Fitch. And the Wildcats run. Here's Barber again. Townsend, the defender. Spin move. Got it. And a no. Oh, no. Offensive foul. Tubby Smith, irate on the sideline. Terrific spin. Push ahead and let the decision be made by Barber. Yeah, he was there. I mean, it's the question in the mind of the referee is it a flop or not? I mean, neither coach is going to be happy if it goes against him. But great attention to detail, and Tubby knows that's a big one. That's maybe a potential three-point play uh, taken away from him. Now Tom Crean gets Todd Townsend out. 
And Robert Jackson back on the floor. And Diener as well out front because he was fatigued. Part of the reason he started turning it over, that an excellent pressure on him. And Dwayne Wade is back on the floor as well, guarded by Cliff Hawkins. Chuck Hayes, who tried to guard him in the first half, sits with four fouls. Merritt, runner, got it. And he has been silent. Terrific penetration by Wade. And Merritt, one of those big guys that can use the ball, put it on the deck. First basket today, the margin back to 14, 940 to go. Hawkins. Yeah, they got to reach in. Another one by Wade there. Small change. That's three. That's significant. It sure is. He's got to stay away from those difficult situations because when he does penetrate, they're going to step up and try and pick up a charge on him. 5th to throw it in. And the lock low by Estel. Now that he's on the floor, use it. Here's Fitch. Estel got open, got loose, the dish. Novak got back. Great cover. That's what you want from the top side. Don't count the house. Get yourself involved. It almost <laughs> drags you to the baseline. Novak did knock it out of bounds. There's Daniels. Automatic switch, and again, a lock low by Estel. Murray pinned. Couldn't do anything but reach in. And that's four fouls on Scott Merritt. So Terry Sanders, number 40, will come on from Merritt. Travis Diener got to uh, rest a couple of minutes. He's back on the floor. And Karen Bradley, number 10, will head to the bench. Non-shooting foul, and Gerald Fitch will throw it in. Watch Fitch on the inbounds. The most dangerous guy is the inbounder. They run a little double screen on occasion for the inbounder. Let's see if they do it here. He just steps in. No back out on him. Daniels. Nice pass. Sure was. Jump hook. No. Hook is down there to rebound, but uh, Jackson ends up with it. But Wade doing a great job on that glass. Here comes Diener. Give it up. Look at this. Right side. Oh! Send it in. Medium size fella. Oh, Diener again. I mean, I get a kick out of the ability to elevate. As Clark Kellogg would say, flush. But I just love the little guy. Give him room to do some damage. Strength, agility, gorgeous. Look at pass. Wow, he can really put it up and soar. It's not Connie Hawkins, but all of a sudden, the bench involved. Nineteen points, nine rebounds, and eight assists to accompany four blocks by Dwayne Wade. Uh, Tom Green's really done a great job rotating his guys. Dieter back fresh all of a sudden. A little more explosivity in their game. Off the floor. Barber saves it for Kentucky. Tries to find a teammate. There's Hawkins. Barber cuts. Good defense by Terry Sanders, but Barber gets the best. Tough release, too. And Wade was very intelligent that trip. He didn't get involved. He could have reached in, maybe gotten another foul on the floor. And Dina told us yesterday his role, normally not that of a 25-point score. He had 29 and 26 to start. But in the win Thursday night, he had eight assists. He loves to pass the ball. That's what he said to us. We get others involved. Looking to lock and load with Jackson here. Look at the banging. Back it goes to Wade. Spots up for three. Why not? What did he say earlier about his jump shot on the open? It's a little bit like honey. Pure. Sixty-seven forty-nine. Well, right now, Marquette took the hit and bounced back. See if the cats can come right after him. A little kick. And a reset. And this is one of the rare venues you will find where the Kentucky fans are outnumbered. Well, they travel so well. Well, if you want to wade in against Marquette, you'll get weighed out with that delivery. Never! Prophetic, would you say? Yes. Interesting how he has stepped up uh, this weekend. Solid play. And the Cats have to get right back in this now, Vern. Solid. Get it inside. Get to the free throw line. Chuck Hayes back on the floor with four fouls. 
Here's Antoine Barber, Bogans, Estel, Fitch. Bogans, beauty. And they, against a little matchup, a little confusion, and nobody played Bogans. The largest lead in the ball game, excuse me, Bill, was 21. That was late, late in the first half. It was 19 at the margin at the break. And Kentucky got within 12 before Dwayne Wade erupted just like that. And now, unfortunately, Bogan's involved in that particular play, not the mobility. Uh, they ran a little bump, a hide-and-seek on the baseline. Others couldn't cover. Seven minutes to go. Estel and Jackson. Good kick. Bogans. Fitch. And a nice screen off by Estel. Jackson, Jackson get over and help. Fitch has 12. 640 remaining. A spot in the final four at stake. Remember, with Wade out there, takes the pressure off Diener a little bit. He can bring the ball up and then get organized. Travis Diener told us yesterday he never did get a chance to meet Al McGuire. He was scheduled to make a visit one week before Coach McGuire's death. And this Marquette team trying to get back to the Final Four for the first time since Al led them to a championship in 1977. They're getting close. Well, uh, you know, you think of some of the great names, the Lee, the Thompsons, Tatums. Well, how about Wade in there? Al would love to have the opportunity to have a guy like this play for him. I mean, just no defense, nice screen, nobody stepped in. He is just going any place he wants, and one of the premier defenders is now, has now fouled out. Chuck Hayes. Eric Daniels back on the floor for Kentucky. When you look at clubs, you, you sort of analyze who's the leader. We said Bogans. I think next in line would be Hayes for the day in, day out effort he has given Tubby and this team. Both ends of the floor. Not too many answers for that guy today. He's got the last 11 points for Marquette and 27 in the game. Estel. And Vern, there's your, you mentioned the hands too. Uh, Estel coming up with a very tough delivery. He hasn't been able to get too many opportunities, but against this matchup, getting in the angles, the gaps, the time able to deliver it. Marquise Estel at the line. As Jackson picks up his third foul. Dwayne Wade. He's getting very close to a triple double. I'll tell you, if you were a grocery store owner, huh? He'd sell it, package it, bag it, deliver it. <laughs> you name it. You know, he's never going to have to worry. No, no, he, he may own a chain. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson, no. Bogan's valiant effort continues for the senior for Kentucky. Here's Cliff Hawkins. When Jackson gets caught getting a little bit late. This will escalate his top and gets the nickel dimer. And that's part of being the last guy down. And the, the last, is, they're supposed to be first. In this case, uh, Jackson gets nailed or tagged for that free throw. That's his fourth. Scott Merritt has four as well. But despite that, he's going to come on and give a blow to Terry Sanders. So Jackson and Merritt on the floor with 5.40 to go in the ball game. And Mark Estel at the line. Well, the nice thing about Kentucky, they can keep going inside. That's part of their philosophy. And, and, and maybe initiating some contact. But get Estel as many touches as you can. And reach yourself with some major contributors on the glass. Estel has 10. He's down 18 from his uh, career high of 28 in the win the other night against Wisconsin. Now Wade. Under five and a half remaining for a berth in the final four in New Orleans. Nice lead pass. He's doing everything, Wade. You name it. Load up. Action Jackson. You'll get it. 74 57. And a steal by Novak with the good hands. Look at the run out for Wade. Hold on, Vern. I got you covered. Incredible performance. I hope he likes Cajun food. <laughs> You name it, Jambalaya. When this Marquette team played Tulane from the Conference USA, 
in New Orleans. Tom Crean arranged for the team to visit the Superdome. And he said, men, this is the goal. They're four minutes and 47 seconds away from making the trip. Preparation, his strong suit. And Mot inspiration, and, as we know. and motivating as well, Vern. That one's no good. Novak with the little slap back pass. And Vern, one other thought I want you to bring out. Early March, in preparing for this tournament, what are some of the things he did? Well, they had a day in March on March 3rd, and they ran through the sets of Arizona and Kentucky. Right. Just in case they would play them in the tournament, and it turned out the sets were analyzed and prepared, and yet the step-up play has been extraordinary. The lead pass baseline tells you where to go. Drop step, the sellout on the top side by Kentucky, and no support from the rear. Well, a triple-double is fairly uncommon in this sport. You've seen one this afternoon. Hawkins gets that basket for Kentucky. But Dwayne Wade's line for the day, and we've still got under four to play, 29 points, 11 rebounds, and 10 assists. He's got to hurry with the blocks for a quadruple. I mean, he's letting down a little bit. Jackson. Diener. No. I want to ask you about Travis Diener. Leslie Visser said last night he's got that uh, sophomoric demeanor and uh, not demeanor but appearance. Well, you know, he does look angelic, but he'd steal your hubcaps. She thinks he looks a lot and plays a lot like Danny Ainge. Well, very much. You know what, though? Not not that. And now, this would offend some people. You know, Danny could be like nasty. Get after you and be gritty and tough. Well, this guy is somewhat like that. I, mean, I can't totally. You're not buying the whole thing. No, not the whole deal. Okay. But, but when I say that, it's with affection about pilfering uh, hubcaps. He's one of these guys that he has a little larceny in his heart. You know, he comes on all dressed up, all buttoned down, and then just gets after it. Reaches inside and gets after it. Well, get used to this combo. You're going to watch it next week in New Orleans. Diener to Wade. Marquette hitting 56% from the field against what was a tenacious Kentucky defense. And they've done it from the perimeter, 9 of 17. And here's Dwayne Wade down on the floor in a defensive posture. 29, 11, and 10. His first career triple-double. And he's also tossed in four blocks. Uh, just to boot, huh? Uh, you know, yesterday, uh, Tom Green saying the best I've ever seen him at practice yesterday. Now, Tom doesn't do anything slow. They go full tilt. If it's an hour, they're going to go hard bore for an hour. An outstanding performance. 77-59 with 314 to go. Nice cut. Entry pass. Oh, wow. That's just great screening off the ball. Great activity by Jackson. And then Wade on the money. Another assist. Another day at the beach. Tom Green said he would tell his men they deserve to be here. We have seen why. Hogan's valiant 15 points in 24 minutes. And he deserves to be here, too. Here's Novak. They'll work the clock now as it stands at 245. Tom Green in his fourth year became a graduate assistant of Judd Heathcote. Others on that staff. Tom Izzo of Michigan State. Calvin Sampson Calvin of Oklahoma. Oklahoma. And last night, Tom Green got a phone call from Kelvin Sampson wishing him well in this game. Uh, the coaching fraternity is Novak against a modest look from deep. Yeah, there is a tightness and to get a togetherness amongst guys that have worked for people. Of course, Judd is proud here, I'm sure, as he is for Tom and Daniels with the follow and the quick timeout as he is for Tom Izzo. Time called by Kentucky. Okay. Well, this one was uh, a boat ride, huh? Wow. 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 Devastating. They got within 12. Had a little spark, mm -hmm. but. And then Wade went off. 
Okay. Okay. How much? What's what's the margin here? 18. Okay. Okay. You're right. <laughs> yeah, I, would, I don't want to go out on the limb, though, Mike. Huh. Yeah, why would we say that? I mean, with the 210 to go in this thing. Uh, yeah, I know, but we should be current with it. Yeah. Makes it look like the graphic was made up last night. Okay. Should I go like that or no? I yes. Think, should I? Yeah. Yeah. No? Maybe not. Yeah, I think so. I'll just go. Okay. I'll let it go. First. Okay. You can verbally find it. Yeah, right? okay. Arizona and Kansas, who will meet at the conclusion of our game or shortly thereafter. Uh, second straight Elite Eight. All four number one seeds remain, but only for the next two minutes and 10 seconds. And 21 games have been decided by five points or less. Arizona, Kansas coming up from Anaheim. That's a second seeded Kansas team against top seeded Arizona. They met in Lawrence earlier. An amazing game when Arizona was down by 20 in the first half and came back and won in Allen Fieldhouse by 17. Now here's Wade. Nice pass. And they are really well schooled. Nothing in a hurry. No spread offense. He's dynamite turning the corner and creating for others. Under two to go. Travis Diener, Keith Bogans is on the sidelines. His career has come to a courageous end. No back. Oh, my goodness. And I don't know if you saw it, Bert. Diener, when he passed the ball, put his arms over his head before the catch. He knew that Novak was going to knock it down and make it a chance for four. Now, watch this look. Now, puts the uh, drops towards half court, throws the arms up, and Novak, the punishment inflicted by the dribble drive and then the kick. Well, why not? Woo. That is as good as I've seen in recent memory. Novak shoots one. Tom Crean loves to use inspirational, motivational speeches. One of the men he had addressed this team was General Hal Moore. And he saved a response on his cell phone answering device from General Moore after they won against Holy Cross in the first game. And you had a chance to listen to it. Well, the great thing is that tell the troops they have to believe. And I love them saying troops. And uh, you were right about Tom. Anything to push his team forward, prod him forward, and on the other end, a guy that I felt did the best coaching job of anybody in the country, and I think the unsettledness of Keith Bogan's health played a part in the responsibility you have to the player and obviously to the team as well. Novak gets a well-deserved round of applause. Just gets those feet set. Gets everybody else deliver the groceries. In 1974, Marquette, the Warriors then, went to the championship game of the NCAA tournament. They lost to David Thompson in North Carolina State. In 1977, under Al McGuire, when Joni Crean <laughs> was a very young person, they won the NCAA title, the one and only in the history of Marquette. They defeated North Carolina in the championship game. They are going back with a chance to win it all for the second time in the history of the program. And I was down there when Al won at the Omni. And a lot of people were crying alongside of him and a little misuse of the dribble at half court. 83-69. Now let's check the CBS Sportsline stat of the game. Field goal percentage. 
56 to 40. Get complete game stats at CBSSportsLine.com or on America Online and our keyword CBS Sportsline. Travis Diener said he thought about Wisconsin. He thought about Marquette. The difference for him was the presence of Tom Crean. Uh, the great relations they have developed. He has grown this season. And a lot of people may be saying the little guy that couldn't. Well, he can. And he did. All the way to New Orleans. This is Joe Chapman, who we are told does the best impression of Tom Crean on the team, number 32. Uh, he better watch where he does it. <laughs> Jared Sistine in there, Jerry's son. Local, yes, that's the only, right. The only Minnesotan on the team. Graham one minute away from a trip to New Orleans. And they run the shot clock out. Well, you get half of what you wanted. Everybody getting an opportunity. Well, I first met Tom Crean in Pittsburgh. And you know, I'll get back to that again because this is a special homage to a guy that stayed and did everything he could. SEC champion, uh, outstanding SEC tournament. Keith Bogans, a lot of courage to play today. Brandon Stockton on the floor, so is Josh Carrier and Kalena Azabuke as uh, both teams have gone to the bench. Well, hard to find the right words about Keith Bogans. Came back, led this team to 26 consecutive victories. He was the emotional and the physical leader of this team. And he gave it the best he had today. Well, you take away that inner strength and guys uh, look for somebody to step up and he is incapable. It's a letdown. And I think as a coaching staff, as you prepare, you try and get guys to do some things maybe that they're not comfortable doing. You know, Keith, not quite himself, but established himself in the lore of great Kentucky basketball. Bogans finishes with 15 points in 24 minutes. The last loss for Kentucky, December 28th at Louisville. They lost by 18. They trailed by 17 years. Tony Grace on the floor as well. I gotta give him a mention. They're playing in a NCAA tournament. Great opportunity for him as well. Josh Carrier. Josh, Josh Carrier gets the basket. Final 20 seconds to go. Well, he Carrier shoot. spots up for three. Like his daddy, right? Oh. I mean, daddy was a great <laughs> shooter at Western Kentucky. Air ball in the hands of Seasting. And the Golden Eagles of Marquette University in Milwaukee are bound for the final four for only the third time ever.